Hey everybody, my name is Christine and welcome to my channel and today's video. Before we get started on the extreme grocery budget challenge for this video, I wanted to let you know that if you are new around here and you haven't seen any of the other ones that I've already done, I'll leave the full playlist down below for you so you can check it out. I live in the state of Idaho in the United States of America and I only have so many stores available to me. I don't have access to an Aldi and so I can only shop with what I have. So your area might have different stores and your prices may be very different from mine. It's definitely not going to be the most balanced meal planning you've ever seen. If you guys are struggling in your life, please reach out to your local school districts, police departments who have the information of where you can go to get food, whether it be a family crisis center, a food pantry, a food bank, or just people in the community who are willing to give to those in need. Please never be ashamed to reach out for these services. That is what they are here for, to help you be fed. The only additional things I will be adding to the items I purchased at the grocery store are basic pantry staples, an oil or fat of some kind, and some very, very minimal baking ingredients, which you will see later on in the video. This week, we are feeding my family of six people for right around $40, let's go to Winco. I knew I wanted some fruit, and so when I saw these gala apples for $1.98 for three pounds, that definitely had to be one of them. And because I scored so well on the apples, I decided to splurge on these strawberries here for $1.68 a pound. Usually that might be a little steep for me, but we do love strawberries, and so I thought it was worth it in this case. Don't ever underestimate the power of onions and garlic when you are on a budget. They add such great flavor to so many dishes. I'm of the opinion that if the recipe calls for like half an onion, a whole onion is better and two onions is definitely even better than that. I wanted to grab some carrots and I was kind of looking for a two pound bag for around a dollar, but all I could find were the baby carrots, which were more expensive, and then a 10 pound bag of carrots, and then a 50 pound bag of carrots, but I couldn't find just like a smaller two pound bag. It was either really, really bulky or the baby carrots. So I did find these loose carrots right here and I went with that instead for 58 cents a pound. One of the meals I wanted to make is a tortellini soup, which you will see later. So I was looking for the cheapest tortellini price in the store. And after looking at the boxed tortellini in the pasta aisle and the bulk bins, the bulk bins was absolutely the cheapest way to go, even though it was definitely a splurge. It was hard for me to buy this rice at $1.40 for two pounds because I knew I could have gotten it for a dollar at the dollar store. So just something to be aware of, uh, and I'll probably say this later in the video as well, is one store will not have the cheapest price on everything ever. Winco won't, Walmart won't, the Dollar Tree won't. I think this will be one of the few times you will ever see me buy tuna for one of the meals I was gonna be making. Dave hates tuna, so it's definitely not something I reach for like ever. So please don't ask me to make uh, more tuna recipes because tuna is not something I buy because my husband just hates it. Sometimes people ask if I come up with my meal plan in the store or if I come up with it before I go. And typically I come up with my plan before I go uh, because I have to price everything out. And some item, some meals use a lot of different ingredients and it ends up being way more expensive than I think, even though it does make a lot. You'll notice in this challenge, I'm definitely going with some cheaper ingredients and some more expensive ingredients. Like I'm here buying the flour and yeast to make some bread so I don't have to buy bread. And I did get the strawberries, which were more expensive, the tortellini, which was more expensive, and some sausage, which you'll see in a minute. And I'm looking at this pancake mix, trying to figure out, is the $1.68 worth it to be able to just add water or is it better to buy the milk and eggs and flour because I already had the flour. So I sat there in the aisle for a long time trying to figure that out. And I did buy syrup. So guess what we're making for breakfast? <laughs> and I can't go to the store and not get a jar of peanut butter. Uh, it's just, it's super high calorie. So you get a lot of like food and energy from the size and price. And I did want to get some frozen veggies to help bulk up some of my meals. And if you can look at these price tags, these are way, way higher than they've been like four to six months ago. And I definitely splurged on that spicy hot sausage. But look at the price of eggs. I could not believe how cheap they were. I walked in there thinking I was going to see way more expensive eggs. But $1.40 for 18 eggs? Like what is happening right now? Why are eggs so cheap? Are, are they a lot in your area or is this just my area? I'm so curious about the fluctuation 
of the egg prices in the last four to five months because they've been all over the map. And I did want to get a gallon of milk to help me with some of my recipes. So I looked for the cheapest gallon of milk, which happened to be a gallon of skim. I don't know why whole milk is more expensive than skim milk. Do you guys know the answer to that? And I did get a, a cheat help family size cream of chicken soup to help me with one of my recipes, just because it's a recipe I grew up with and I didn't want to mess it up because I've never kind of gone outside of the written one on that particular case and to make life easy, some canned pasta sauce. Here's a quick shot of everything that I got today at Winco for this week's extreme grocery budget challenge. And we did splurge on a few items. Strawberries is kind of a splurge. This spicy hot pork sausage is almost $3 at my Winco and I can get a similar pork sausage at Walmart for only $1.94 that not every store is going to have the best prices on everything. This was definitely a splurge, my cheese filled tortellini. You can absolutely do a cheaper pasta, but I did wanna show you an inexpensive soup option for this week, something that I had growing up. I think you're gonna like it. I noticed that my frozen vegetable prices are higher than they were two months ago. I used to be able to always get these bags of veggies at my Winco for like 88 cents a bag. They are all now over a dollar. One last quick view of all the food we're gonna be eating this week. I know it doesn't look like very much, but don't worry, you will see some good things come out of this. So let me put all of these away and we will get prepping for tomorrow's breakfast. I'm getting a head start on this week's budget grocery challenge by making three loaves of my crusty, no need artisan bread. I do have a fully dedicated in-depth video on how to make this bread and I'll leave that down below for you in the description box. But all I have is three cups of flour, a cup and a half of warm water, a half a teaspoon of the yeast that I bought and one teaspoon of salt. And all you need to do is stir it up and cover it with saran wrap and we will be ready to bake tomorrow. It is all mixed up. I did have to add just a little bit of extra water today. Must be very dry in my area. That's something to learn when you're dealing with flour and bread is it's not really necessarily about the measurements, it's about the texture and what it looks like. And this one should be a little bit wet. So I'll cover it with saran wrap, wait six to eight hours and then we will bake. I leave it on the counter. We are trying to get the yeast to activate and get it to be very, very bubbly. So it does need to be warm. Leave it on the counter. And it's time to move on with the bread. So I've dumped two of my bowls out onto a floured clean counter. And here is what it looks like after it's done sitting for several hours. It just gets really bubbly like this. This step basically punches it down so it can rise again. They're not very big. See, here's the size of my hand. I'm just cooking my breads in some loaf pans with another loaf pan flipped over the top. I do need to wipe out the bottom of that to create steam on the inside to make a nice crust. So we'll see these in a little while. Here are my loaves of bread. They're very, very hot out of the oven. So we're gonna let these cool for a bit. In my breakfast prep, I am browning up my spicy sausage with my little meat masher that I picked up at Family Dollar. It's one of my new favorite kitchen tools. You should we're go get one. We're gonna do a breakfast casserole and I'm just getting started making it right now. And I'm using my homemade bread that we made, the crusty bread, and I chunked it into chunks. So this is six to eight cups of cubed bread. It is not an entire loaf. And I did brown up my one pound of spicy Italian sausage. And that was quite the experience because hot grease popped and landed in my eye, which has never happened before. But don't worry, the eyeball is intact, so I think it's all gonna be okay. We're going to do about nine eggs or so, maybe eight, three cups of milk and salt and pepper. And if you do have cheese on hand, that would also be nice to add right now, but you don't have to do that. And then we'll cover all of this with our egg and milk mixture, and then you just pop it in the oven for an hour. Here's my mixture after I add my eggs and milk. And if you feel like it looks a little bit dry, you can add a little bit more milk and egg if you want to, but you don't have to. I'm gonna let mine soak for a little bit and then we will cook it for about an hour or so. And this is a savory version of a breakfast casserole, but you can also do a sweet version with berries and cream cheese and serve it with syrup. But I really like this one. Now, the original plan was to make French toast out of my homemade bread for breakfast. And then I realized I didn't buy nearly enough eggs. I didn't think that went through very well. Instead, what we're gonna do is use our flour and milk and eggs that we bought and make pancakes instead. This is just your standard Betty Crocker pancake recipe. You can make them fresh every day or you can make a big batch and eat it for the rest of the week. The choice is yours. I am tripling the standard recipe today. So I have three cups of flour in here. I'm gonna add in my three eggs, two and one quarter cup of milk. This is just for when we're done. 
and pantry ingredients I will be adding is salt, oil, just about a tablespoon of any kind of sugar you can find, a little bit of baking powder. And we will mix this all up and cook it on our griddle. Everything's in my bowl and it's time to give it some whiskey business. Pancakes are definitely a family favorite in our house, so if you have kids or if you're a college student, don't be afraid to just stick with something simple like pancakes and syrup for breakfast. And if you don't want to make them from scratch, you can pick up that box mix that I saw in the store as well. It was very inexpensive. Lunch for two of the seven days, you could do the first two days or spread it out. We are going to have peanut butter and apple sandwiches. If you guys have never done this, kids really, really like it. At least my kids really like it. You just put on your peanut butter and really, really thin apple slices onto a sandwich. Because the homemade bread is so cheap to make, the kids can have two, three sandwiches. My boys will probably all eat two. So here are my sandwiches before I close them up. I put a thin layer of peanut butter on both sides and then my thinly sliced apples. And this is only about a third of an apple to make two sandwiches. So if you're making six sandwiches, it's only one apple. You make 12 sandwiches, it's only two apples because they go so far because you're cutting them so thin. So you can put the lids back on those. And in case you guys didn't know, sandwiches cut in half taste better than sandwiches not cut in half. So let's cut these in half so they taste better. Here is lunch for the first two days, peanut butter and apple sandwiches with homemade bread. Every person is able to get two sandwiches. Okay, it is time to bulk prep some lunches. On the cheap, we are doing basically a no meat, very, very simple stir fry with rice and veggies and soy sauce. You can cook these up however you need. These are all of the ingredients that I purchased at my store. I'm gonna cook up this entire two pound container of rice in my Instant Pot, if you don't have one, no big deal. You can totally do it on the stove. It's how I did it for 15 years. You just take the amount of rice you're cooking, double the amount of water. So if you're doing one cup of rice, two cups of water, boil the water in your pot, dump the rice in when it's boiling, give it a stir, turn it to low, put the lid on, 20 minutes later, perfect rice. Never even had a rice cooker in my house before I got the Instant Pot, but I'm gonna do it there because it's kind of my favorite way to do it. I have this frozen bag of mitts of mixed veggies. I think I'm gonna add some garlic cloves because I'm not gonna use this whole head for cooking this week. Some soy sauce, and I'll scramble up two eggs to add in there as well. I don't have a wok, but that would be nice if I did. It would make it a lot easier. Additional ingredients you can add that I will be adding today just for my own personal preference is some oil to cook everything in. I like my soy sauce with a touch of brown sugar to balance out the salty. And I do have some homemade crushed red pepper flakes. These are super easy to make. You just, so I grow jalapenos in my garden. You let them dry out on your counter. They turn red. And then once they're totally dry, you just puree them. Spice grinder or in a food processor or something like that. And then they last for a really, really long time. Should make a couple of lunches for my family. Nice, easy, delicious. In case you were wondering, two pounds of rice is five cups of rice. You're welcome. Garlic sauteing is the best smell on the planet Earth. Changed my mind. Here are my six bowls out for my stir fry. When I do these videos, I get a ton of comments about how the portions are so small. So I just wanna show the size of these bowls. And these are, I do get asked where I get them. These are originally from Pier 1, so I don't know that you can get them anymore since rest in peace, Pier 1. So I have a measuring cup with two cups of water in it. I just wanna know like how much can fit in here. Okay, that's two cups of water. Just for size reference, here are my stir fry bowls for lunches. If you have some sriracha around, I almost don't have any around. You can add that to the top. You can top it with more soy sauce, some cilantro hanging around, some sesame oil, anything else that you have sitting around, you can totally use for these. You can add chicken if you want. You can add pork if you want, but you don't have to. Lunch for the last three days is gonna be grilled cheese sandwiches. Never underestimate the power of a sandwich. So my package of cheese came with 16 slices, which gives me three sandwiches per person almost. They're a touch big, so I might be able to rip one side off and squeak out another few sandwiches for the last day if one person gets one sandwich. So we're gonna have grilled cheese sandwiches for the last three days with fruit. So we'll start with our strawberries and finish up with the remainder of our apples. Started making my grilled cheese. You can use whatever fat you want. Typically I would use butter, just spread pretty thickly on the bread itself. But today I'm just using oil in my pan. So I sprinkled it around and then kind of like moved the bread around like this so it would soak up all the oil. And I like to cook at a medium, medium low heat so the cheese has time to melt. So as soon as we're crispy on that side, we'll flip it over. 
lunch for the last three days, grilled cheese sandwiches and fruit. Today's the only day with strawberries and then we'll eat apples for the rest of it. We are going to make a soup out of these ingredients. And it's a soup that I had a lot growing up. We called it the belly button soup. Okay, you don't have to call it that because of the tortellini. We just thought they looked like belly buttons. And as kids, <laughs> it was the belly button soup in my house growing up. It's an easy soup to make. Kids really enjoy it. I enjoyed it as a kid. I don't know where my mom got this recipe, but it is from her and it's extremely nostalgic for me. And I like it because it actually doesn't use any meat. The tortellini is kind of a splurge ingredient, but if you bulk it up with some vegetables, some carrots and onions and broccoli, maybe serve it with that crusty bread on the side, it can be really filling and not that expensive. In addition to the ingredients I bought, I will be using salt and pepper from my pantry, as well as some Italian seasoning. You can pick up a small jar of Italian seasoning at your dollar store for about a dollar, or you can even get it at Walmart, I believe for a touch less than that, maybe about 90 cents. So I'm gonna chop up my veggies and kind of dump everything in a bowl. Here we go, have my lineup over here. All of my veggies, I, nothing ever looks as big on camera as it is in real life. So for size reference, this is a serving bowl for like a salad serving bowl. And I have all of the carrots, the two onions and three massive cloves of garlic chopped in here. And this is eight cups. It kind of looks smaller than that. Anyway, I have my large soup pot. I chose this one because it's a nine quart soup pot and I am trying to triple this recipe and I wanted it all to fit in this one. So fingers crossed, it will all fit in this one. Now the recipe says basically to dump everything in and simmer it for 30 minutes. But in order to increase the flavor a little bit, I am actually gonna saute my veggies first in some fat. You can use oil, butter, coconut oil, bacon fat you keep in your fridge, whatever it is you have on hand, use that. So we'll saute these and then uh, add the rest of our ingredients. Here's all of my bouillon cubes that came in the package I purchased and it's one cube for two cups of water. And I'm gonna be using approximately 16 cups of water, so it is all of them, but I am gonna kind of like taste as we go and maybe start a little on the shy side and add more if I think I need it. Let's get sauteing. You know I had to stir this soup with my Happy Face spoon, you guys. I love these spoons, they just make me happy in the kitchen. They are available on Amazon, so I will link them down below. Just make sure you get the 13 inch one and not the five inch one. I think that's all I can fit in here. <laughs> So I have 16 cups of water. I did five of the bouillon cubes, which is like 10 cups of broth, but I do want to taste for salt. And I put the entire family size can of cream of chicken soup, all of the veggies, all of my tortellinis in here. There's the condensed soup that hasn't dissolved yet. Dissolved? Spread out? I don't really know. And my tortellinis are in here. So you could do this soup with just a regular pasta and have it be way cheaper. This is a pound and a half of pasta for the three servings. So like one serve, one batch of the soup would be a half a pound of pasta. And I did my Italian seasoning. So I'm gonna bring this to a boil and it's gonna simmer for about 30 minutes and then it's gonna be done. This is a great soup to make ahead and freeze. And you definitely don't have to triple it like I'm doing. I'm just trying to get three dinners out of it. Variety in your diet costs more money. So if you wanna save money, you just have to have the same thing more often. <laughs> so we will check back on this in a little while. My veggies are soft, so I added the rest of my broccoli and I tasted for seasoning and I definitely needed the other bouillon cubes, so I added the rest of them. We're just gonna simmer this for another 10 minutes for the rest of the bouillon cubes to kind of dissolve and the broccoli to warm up. Doesn't need to cook necessarily, but just warm up and kind of come together. I feel like it's a touch thick. It's usually not, if I remember right, I remember it being a little more soupy than that. Ooh, that's a huge chunk of broccoli. Of course, you can always use soup and salad and serve some salad on the side with some of that homemade bread it would be really nice as well. Here is my chicken tortellini soup, AKA the belly button soup. You can eat it just like this. My mom always served it with Parmesan cheese on the side. It is not necessary to do that, but if you do have it or have a couple dollars to pick up a cheap Parmesan cheese, that's another addition to make the taste even better. Some goldfish on top, some saltines on the side are also good as well. This is an extremely nostalgic recipe for me. Of course, I will have it linked down below for you. Hope you enjoy it if you try it. Let's make some tuna noodle casserole and I have enough for three meals because I'm only gonna use uh, one can in this first meal to kind of stretch it a little bit. But these are the ingredients that I purchased, the peas, the egg noodles, oops, the canned tuna, and the flour and additional pantry items is gonna include 
oil to make a roux, some seasoned salt or salt and pepper, depending on what you like. If you have some cheese hanging around, that would be another nice addition. You could also use cream of mushroom soup instead of making your roux. Either way is totally fine. You tell me what you think. I grabbed these from my garden today. Is that fair to make a tomato cucumber salad and put that on the side or is that cheating? You decide if that's fair or not. But if you have a garden, you can use garden items, especially during the summertime. Let's go ahead and start some pasta water to boil and make our roux. Once your oil is hot, you, you will add an equal amount of flour to fat content. So I used two tablespoons of oil, but you can use butter, bacon fat, coconut oil, sausage grease, whatever you have on hand. Two tablespoons of flour, and you do want to cook it and stir with a whisk for a while to get kind of the raw flour taste out, otherwise that's gonna be no good. And you see this texture right here? I think I could actually add more flour than this, so I think I will. And if you're going to make gumbo, you're gonna stir this for like an hour. <laughs> so stir this for a couple of minutes and then we'll add, oh, I forgot to mention the milk. We will be adding our milk too. After you add your milk, wang jangle that together until it's nice and thick. And if it's too thick, I mean, you can add more water, more milk, chicken stock would be nice. And don't forget to add your salt and pepper. Oh, look how thick that is already. I'm definitely gonna need more milk. Tuna is in, and uh, don't be afraid of the pepper, my friends. The people, the people, they want the pepper. Do not be afraid of the pepper. Lots of pepper, taste for salt, and we'll mix it with our pasta, and we're, I mean, we're about done. Here's the only issue with this in my family is that there's no way Dave would eat this. Dave despises tuna with like the depth of his being. So you could do canned chicken, although that is more expensive, or you can do fresh chicken again, more expensive. This is a uh, reminiscent of the tuna noodle casserole my mom made when I was a kid. Here we go. I'm going to make mine fresh every day. I definitely have enough for two more meals. So this is the first meal, but you could make it in bulk and just do all of it at one time. And I did end up making that salad. This is all the tomatoes I showed you and one of the cucumbers. If you've never just had some tomato and cucumber mixed together with salt, pepper, and a little bit of lime juice, you should, cause it's really delicious. For the next couple of meals, we are going to make homemade pasta. We purchased our flour and eggs, and to make it really easy, I just bought a pasta sauce, although you can make your own if you want to out of tomatoes out of your garden or whatever, some salt and some olive oil, and that's about all you need. Now, I do have a pasta, homemade pasta recipe that I do prefer over this one, but it uses way more eggs than I have in this case, so today, we're gonna make this different version. You can mix it by hand on the counter, or you can use a food processor to mix it, which is what I will be doing today. Uh, you could also use a, a bread machine, or a KitchenAid, or just anything that will knead the dough for you. It really doesn't matter, and of course you can do it by hand. So I have two cups of flour right here that we will dump in, two large eggs. My other recipe calls for like seven eggs, so I'll have to show you that one in a different video, but. That pasta is really delicious, really, really rich. I have used it to make homemade ravioli, which takes forever, but it's so good. I have a half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter cup of water, and I'm going to stream in my olive oil. So I'll close that. About a tablespoon or so. You wanna knead it until it turns into a ball and it's really elastic, about five minutes, five to 10 minutes, and you can't over mix it. So if you're worried about going too much, not possible. Okay, here is our dough, and it's turned into a nice tight ball, and if you push it like that, it will want to spring back. The dough is very, very tight right now, so I am going to let it sit right there with some saran wrap or a tea towel for about 30 minutes, and then it will be relaxed enough to roll out. Okay, the plan was to use my pasta machine, but I can't find it. <laughs> We're gonna do it old school style, and that's to just roll it out with a rolling pin, which is totally fine, but I'm not gonna be able to get it as thin as I would normally be able to do. So rustic style pasta, it is. <laughs> and then I'm gonna have to ask my husband where the heck my pasta roller machine is. So we are going to cut this into four pieces and do a quarter of a piece at a time. You can use this pasta dough for anything, for anything from homemade lasagna noodles, which are excellent, to spaghetti, to ravioli. And then once you roll it out, 
to your desired thinness and shape, you have to let it dry for at least 30 minutes. And then when you cook it, only takes uh, two to three minutes in boiling water and then you're done. They make little cool roller cutters, but a pizza cutter also works fine. And then you need something to kind of lay it on to dry. A tall pitcher, you can drape them over just cause I don't have an actual pasta drying rack. We're gonna do long, thick, kind of fettuccine style noodles here like this. Just kind of drape them over something like this to dry. You guys see that? Like that. And then let them dry uh, 30 minutes up to an hour. Kind of doesn't matter. Once your water is nice and boiling, we are going to add a generous amount of salt. Ooh -hoo -hoo. And if this is not enough pasta for you, you should have plenty of flour to make some more. You can triple, quadruple the batch and have it be ready for many meals, dry it for a little bit longer. So to boil this for about three minutes and it is done. That looks like happy pasta, don't you think? There you go, my friends, homemade pasta with jarred sauce. If you've never made homemade pasta, you should try it because the taste is unmatched. I have never had a dried pasta taste anywhere near as good as a fresh homemade pasta. And if you have a garden, you can pick a bunch of green beans from your garden and saute those up on the side. And there's a lot of green beans in there. And have those on the side of your homemade pasta. If you don't have a garden, then you don't have to do that. Or if you have another couple dollars, you can splurge in a green vegetable or a salad to have as well. And maybe a slice of your homemade crusty bread would also be delicious. So after taxes, the $42 that I spent on all of these groceries was able to make all of the meals that you just saw in this video. If I have recipes, I will leave those down below in the description box for you. And remember, if you wanna check out any of my previous Extreme Grocery Budget Challenge videos, I have an entire playlist of those down below as well. Thank you for joining me today. If you guys enjoyed today's video and you wanna see more cooking videos or other shenanigans on my channel, hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy Extreme Challenges. And I will see you guys in the next video.